Question C here, we have a light frictionless belt carrying a smooth cylinder A, which is right there, uh, as shown in the diagram. The 10 kilogram mass is falling at a constant velocity. So velocity is constant, um, which also means that A is traveling up at a constant velocity. Um, and assume the pulley is frictionless, and we have to calculate the mass of cylinder A. Okay, so frictionless pulley. If we can imagine what's going on, we've got uh, this um, this rope, or is it a rope? It's a belt that's coming down at a constant rate. If that's coming down at a constant rate, um, that means this is going up at a constant rate. Um, is it going up at the same constant rate? Well, let's have a little think about this and see how we can work that out, just, just out of interest. If this moves down by 10 centimetres, um, then uh, that's 10 centimetres down there. That means we require 10 centimetres of, um, of belt to pass over the pulley, which means I think that we'll take 5 centimetres from each side, lifting this up only uh, 5 centimetres in total. Okay, so um, if we're um, looking at the um, the forces involved, um, it'll be uh, no, maybe that's not a good way to approach it. Well, okay, we will look at the forces, but not in in the way I was originally considering. Um, let's look at the force on the ten kilogram mass. We have uh, clearly, um, if we assume that G is uh, 10 newtons per kilogram then we will have um, 100 newtons down here that means the tension force capital T must be also equal to 100 newtons which means uh, that 100 newton tension force applies here and here because it's uh, going through the the belt all the way back around okay what that then means, because we've got forces balanced on here, that means the force down from A, due to gravity, must be, we'll call that FA, it must be equal and opposite to that same tension force, but this time the tension force is applied in two parts. We can't spread it out to say there's 50 newtons on one and 50 newtons on the other, because that would, that would snap it, um, and that would mean that there's only 50, uh, or maybe it would snap it, yes it would, if there's 100 newtons on one part and 50 newtons on one part of, of the whole um, band that's passing around, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so, as I said, there has to be uh, equal and opposite force. The force downward A should be equal to the force upward um, from the tension, and because it has to be equal, these two tension forces must be the same as each other, and each of them must be the same as the tension force uh, here. That means it'll be 100 plus 100 equals 200 newtons. So uh, from that, if we've taken gravity as 10 newtons per kilogram, we can work out that A, the mass of A, is, is 20 kilograms. There we go, and that's how you get your answer. Just to take this a little further and to help get it clear in your mind what's going on, it might be useful to imagine you've got a different, slightly different situation where you've got a single pulley, a frictionless pulley, and you've got two 10 kilogram masses. We'll just call them mass. doesn't matter what mass they are, they're the same. And uh, if they're just sitting there, <coughs> so a pulley's not turning, and they're just sitting there, the forces will all be balanced because the tension force from one um, up here is balanced by the tension force from the other and uh, the, those tension forces are balanced by the weight forces uh, down by them. However, if you started one moving, so if you, if you say took um, the right hand side and you started it moving, so you gave it a small velocity, then this would also have a small velocity. As long as it's at a constant velocity, Okay, constant velocity, then um, then the forces are still balanced in this case, so the tension is still um, the way it is. There's still uh, 10, well, in the one, in the, from the example above it would still be 100 and 100 um, on each side. Now, the only difference then 
uh, from our example above is that because we've still got this mass that was sitting in the middle pulling down on the rope but now this mass has to be fixed to the ceiling or, or to something up there and, and so it, it has to pull against that in order to create leverage to pull this one um, with a force due to gravity down that way otherwise it will snap and go down but in any case um, for that to be the case it has to apply a force pulled downwards um, of an equal value that's where we get that 200 newtons from okay sorry it's a little bit hard to explain but um, the concept works and you can try it out um, maybe with uh, a, a few pulleys and bits and pieces in your physics class